All right, so uh, let's get to those uh, questions here. I'm going to start with one on Facebook because it lines up with something that we have here on the screen. David in California wants uh, us to give him our thoughts on post-millennial eschatology. And Andy in North Carolina is on the phone. Hi there, Andy. Your question is uh, similar. What, how, what did you want to know? Hey, guys. How are you doing? Doing all right. Good. Thanks for taking my call. Um, yeah, uh, just a, a brief background. Uh, I was raised uh, pre-tribulation, but for the past year or so, I've recently been hearing the preaching of uh, post-millennialism, and I've, I've accepted that doctrine. But I just wanted to ask you guys what your take on that. Like in, uh, was it Matthew 24, the uh, the abomination of desolation, you know, Jesus spoke of. Do you, do you believe that's for the people, that generation he was talking to, mm-hmm. or do you believe that's for us? Okay, so first of all, what is post-millennial eschatology, Bobby? Post-millennial eschatology would be the view that Christ is going to come after the end of the millennium. Uh, The millennium is not necessarily some specific thousand-year point, uh, but it is believed that the church is to usher in the millennium, uh, so to speak, and Christ will come at the end of it. Um, This was a view that was more espoused to uh, before World War I and World War II, uh, because the view believes, unlike maybe certain forms of dispensationalism that would see the world getting progressively worse uh, before uh, Christ comes, this sees the world getting better before Christ's coming. And so for me, uh, that's where I have a really hard time seeing, uh, number one, uh, post-millennialism fitting, because I don't see the world uh, getting better. I see it getting worse. I, th- I see the Scripture teaching that it's going to get worse uh, before Christ comes uh, when we look in the Scriptures. Um, I think that Revelation 20 is to be taken as a literal thousand-year reign, and it fits to me that Christ is the one reigning in that thousand-year era. And so, for those reasons, I'm uncomfortable with the hermeneutics of post-mill, and I think that our real hope is a a true 1,000-year millennium where Christ is reigning. That will certainly be a season of flourishing. But before that, you've got the tribulation period, and that's still yet to come. And so things aren't looking the best for me on a scriptural interpretive level for post-mill. So as they say on Shark Tank, for those reasons, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. yeah. Brian, what do you say? Well, I would just, um, and that's great, Bobby, uh, fantastic uh, explanation of post-millennialism. So, Andy, to your question specifically, um, we would see that the generation is not the generation Jesus was speaking to, but the generation that sees the things that Jesus was uh, prophesying at that point. So... Um, this generation shall not pass till all these things are fulfilled, uh, speaking of that, that generation that sees it. So what do you think? Um, uh, well, thanks for your answers. Uh, yeah, that's just what I believe when he said uh, this generation will not pass until these things happen. I, I mean, I believe he was talking to that generation, mm-hmm. especially through down history. What, what is it, 70 A.D., when the Roman army sacked Jerusalem? Yeah. And all of these terrible, horrible things happened. I mean, it's terrible things yeah. that Jesus warned them about, you know, but there were some that listened. And then that, and then, then there were some that said, well, you know, don't listen to Jesus. He's he's not who he says he is. Come back to the temple. Everything's going to be everything's going to be fine. Well, it wasn't fine. There's a lot of death that happened and Jesus warned them. Right. So what what has drawn you to the post-millennial perspective? Why why do you now see that that is a more viable understanding of uh, the future than what you previously believed? Um, yeah, like again, the pre-tribulation, I just don't buy into that anymore. Uh, not to say that there aren't uh, saved Christians that believe that, uh, that's not what I'm saying, because I used to believe that too. Um, 
I just don't – honestly, for me, I just don't see any hope in it because, the, to be honest with you, it's basically saying, well, the world's supposed to get worse and Jesus is going to come back. Well, let's let it get worse. Let's, let's let this earth – and if this is bad to say, I'm sorry, let, the go, let it go to hell in the handbasket almost to force him to come back so we can get out of here and, you know, go to heaven someday. Didn't we kind of talk about that on Thursday's program when we talked about environmentalism and everything? Yeah. yeah. Is that what prompted your call, Andy? Uh, no, I, I, I must have missed that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should go back and listen to it. Cause, and, and let me just say this, too. Now, I mean, you do understand that uh, post-millennialism and pre-tribulationalism, we're talking about two different things here. Um, because the opposite, of, or not the opposite, but you know the the other position would be premillennialism, which might or might not include pre-tribulationalism. So there are there are lots of premillennial people, and uh, premillennial in that they believe, like as Bobby said, that Christ will uh, he will inaugurate the millennium and he will reign over the earth for those thousand years. There are lots of people that believe that, but do not believe in a pre-tribulational rapture. Some believe in a post-tribulational rapture. Some believe in a mid. Some believe in uh, pre-wrath. Pre-wrath and classic premillennialism, historic premillennialism, doesn't believe in a rapture at all. <laughs> they just believe that the you know Christ is going to return and set up the kingdom. So, um, so maybe you could still be pre-mill. <laughs> Uh, because I think the hard thing is when you read even Matthew 24 and the things that Jesus says are going to transpire, those things did not happen in 70 AD. Um, you know, the sign of the Son of Man coming and all of the things that Jesus said. I don't care how you slice 70 AD, that stuff did not happen. And so, I mean, you have to hyper-spiritualize it. You have to exaggerate mm. it. And then the other problem is you've got to go back to the Old Testament and you've got to take all of these promises that God has clearly made to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and their descendants, the children of Israel, about their future and say that those are all now null and void. And, but Jesus himself said to the apostles, he said, you will sit on 12 thrones and judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, when Jesus was going to ascend, the disciples said, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom uh, to Israel? Jesus didn't say, oh, no, that's not going to happen. That's a misinterpretation. He said, that's not for you to know. That's in the Father's hands. Your mission is to go, you know, preach the gospel. So, um, you know, maybe rethink your postmillennialism in contrast with premillennialism rather than the tribulation component. Um, I believe in the, in, um, the rapture uh, as pre-trib as well, but like I said, there are many premillennial people that do not hold to that view. Yeah, I hold to a pre-mill view and uh, don't exactly know where I come down on the timing of the rapture, um, you know, if it's post or pre or, or whatever, uh, but I feel like I can have a conversation one day and feel, you know, pre and then the next I can feel post. And so I, it's not, I, because I, I, and sometimes I look at the arguments and I just scratch my head and think, oh my goodness, this is, um, this I, is, you know, the thing that's ironic about this <laughs> to, to me with you, <laughs> this is the irony. You went to the seminary yeah. that is like the bastion yeah. of, dispensationalism mm -hmm. es eschatologically yeah. I mean you <laughs> that was your education yeah and how did how did they not you know what it is there is an element and I have to always be aware of this uh, with my personality I don't like um, my, my brain challenges things so like I don't like to be put in a particular box mm -hmm. and so um, th there's times I have to like on my insides go um Am I a am I a pre-tribber and I'm just not wanting to surrender that because then I feel like uh, you know that's where so there there is this element where but and I've said before my other problem with pre-trib it's not so much 
it's it's some of the goofy stuff, and I and I find myself not wanting to be associated yeah. with it, and so I want to remove myself because I don't want to. You know what I mean? It's kind of like I think we all get it, even on a Christian swath. Like um, when somebody when we tell somebody we're a Christian, you, you know, you, you're nervous because what what do they understand Christian to mean? Are we the guy carrying around a billboard saying, you know, God hates you? And I'm going, I don't want people to think mm. uh, that a Christian is that. And so I don't want to associate that. Um, when you talk about a pre-trib, I mean, do you, do you, do you think that I, I'm in love with the Left Behind series, and that I think that uh, that the, that the movie production level uh, was through the roof and it should have won, you know, awards and stuff? Is is that what you think? So I, I find myself resistant on that level. But at the end of the day, here and I could just see some real black and white people thinking, you know, now son. What does the scripture say? Okay, and I get that. But careful, Brian might have to fire you again. Like I know, right? That'd be twice in one week. Um, But it it is possible. (laughs) It's possible. (laughs) But there, but there are, but there are. Okay, what do the scriptures teach? But Brian would know too. There are really sharp people, like a Craig Keener, who has churned out quite a bit of books, (laughs) uh, who is a post trip, Mm. right? And so I find myself at times made nervous. to certain dogmatism because of my be by respect of certain scholars on both camps. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, the no. point that our caller was making about, you know, people believing in the world's just going to go to hell in a handbasket before Christ comes. So we don't need to do anything. We absolutely refuted that idea that we are to restore all things. Yeah. And so just because somebody has the viewpoint that things are going to get worse yeah. does not mean that they have the right to be passive. The Bible tells us that we're to take care of the poor in those types of things. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's, that's good. And I, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm on a, I'm on a bit of a mission to prove <laughs> that you can be pre-mill and also you can engage absolutely in, um, you know, social reform, social justice, you know, you, you can, and you should. Yeah. Yeah. You're that there's nothing inherently in that theology that says you should just let the world go to hell in a handbasket. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, that, that's, a, that's an imposition on the theology. You know, the other D- thing that, from it. that I would bring up, uh, you know, you kind of talked about, uh, Hey, I went to DTS and that, you know, maybe the fact that I would even have questions about pre-trib and at some point I just need to kind of do a deep dive again. Um, I struggle sometimes. Do you ever feel like, okay, you turn on CNN and, or, or you turn on Fox. They all sound like they've drank the same Kool-Aid. Like everybody sounds alike. Um, you listen to people um, in particular denominations and they all sound alike. And I'm thinking, does it, like, can you really overlay one? Th- I mean, if you're a thinking person, is there any one place that you're going to exist and you just all sign on the same hundred dotted line? Or can we have a little bit of difference? And so I just don't like that feeling when I'm like, you you just all sound like a broken record. Like, I think a beautiful form of Christianity is one that ex- that totally believes in the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ, trusts in him. Yet, just because you're a part of a particular denomination, like that's what I like about being non-denomination. Like you've probably seen it, like maybe even in Calvary, where everybody just seems like they they sound exactly alike on every single answer, and it's like, is there not any freedom to think like differently without being accused of being a heretic? No, no. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> no. None. Apparently, I mean, like, like I do believe that you can do, totally passionately believe in the in, in the trustworthiness of Scripture, the death, the burial, resurrection of Christ, the penal substitutionary atonement of Jesus. Yet you can think differently on some things. Well, and like you said a minute ago, I mean, you know, there are some really not just smart people, but there are people that are really biblically literate with a capital L, they really know the scriptures Mm. and they've landed in another place. Now, the truth of the matter is, like, let's just talk about the the rapture for a moment. Um, You know, the the truth is it's not as clear as sometimes we um, insist that it is. 
That's why there's different views. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That, if it was so clear, nobody would be yeah. uh, d- debating it, right? Right. I mean, we're not debating whether Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah. That's crystal clear. He mm-hmm. he either did or didn't. And or if he didn't, then we're again. not Christians, right? Yeah. Or, that, or whether he's coming again. Yeah. But the fact that there are good, godly, scholarly minds on on different, you know, land at different places on this, you have to just, you have to have a little humility and just say, okay, well, I mean, this is how I see it, but all right, you know, yeah. he, they see it differently and I'm going to have to give some space for that. Mm-hmm. Humility, what a concept. <laughs> well, you know, there was somebody who said, uh, I am meek and humble in heart. Let's think, who was that? It th- wasn't Buddha. <laughs> no, I think his name was Jesus. <laughs> yeah. yep. Yep. <laughs> Andy, thanks for your phone call today on mm-hmm. the Pastor's Perspective program. And uh, Bobby DTS called. They want their degree back. Um, <laughs> no, I'm joking. This is Pastor's Perspective. Brian Perez here with Brian Broderson and Bobby Conway. And uh, we're not live today, but well, uh, I just want to go back to or, go. No, I just want to say, Bobby, you know, Andy's in North Carolina. I mean, maybe you guys can have some coffee and talk about the millennium. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Spruce Pine, where is that? Do you know where that is? I don't. Oh. Um, probably somewhere where there's some pine trees. Um, you would think. Or spruce. Up, spruce you know, pine trees. Spruce pine trees. Yes. Yeah. Say that I, five times fast. I bet it's in the mountains, but Eastern Carolina, but or Western Carolina, but I'm not sure. <laughs> it's like, we're, we're just being like, you know, people used to come up to me like when I lived in England. Oh, you're from California? Yeah, I'm from California. Do you know so-and-so? <laughs> <laughs> yes. As a matter of fact, they're my neighbor. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'm, I, I, I'm still, I mean, much more familiar with driving around here and the amount of places than I would there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's a beautiful state. 